So the controversy is around this scapegoat named Luke Haynes. He's an art filter, and he there's it's a two pronged controversy, and I'm going to address both of those things because Luke is a dear friend of mine, and if I don't talk about this, he can come directly. I'm not a very good friend. So the, the the first thing we need to understand, and as you see, is as soon as you put a thread to fabric in the 21st century, you are entering yourself into a discussion about feminism, about art versus craft, and about gender. There's no way we can't because of this. Quilts were women's work. People were anonymous. People threw away the quilts. They didn't care about them. Now, in this country, we have the money and the leisure to make these things. Are they art? Are they craft? I don't know. They're both. Okay? They're what you want to make them. Luke, just like many male quilters, and oh my God, there are women who make quilts. Women make quilts. Everyone in a lecture, I say, you know, I'm going to use the pronoun she and, and you know, because I know there's a few men. There's all this like hubbub. And I talked to my mom, I said, Mom, there's all this backlash for Luke, and it's weird. And she's like, oh, the, the gender thing? Oh, yeah. yeah, that comes around every couple of years. <laughs> it's not every discussion. It happens every day, it happens all the time. Every like 10 years, people talk about this. So people say, oh, men quilters, male quilters get more attention for their work because they're dudes. And it's not fair. And I would say to you that that would be true if for one thing. A man who comes into this school world, who has nothing new to say, who has no talent to speak of, who's not pushing envelopes or making quilts that are beautiful and gorgeous, he'll stick around because he's a man for about 10 minutes. And then he will be gone. But then you have a person like Luke Haynes, who is a trained artist in studio art, he's an architect, who's making quilts that don't look like anybody's. They're extraordinary. You might not like them, but look at the technical brilliance that he has, look at the design skills he has. They're amazing. And I went to his log cabin exhibit on Thursday night, he made 50 quilts. 50 quilts that used the log cabin motif, the log cabin block, interpreted in 50 different ways. Did he make them all himself? No. This is the second part of the controversy. Luke, who has produced 50 quilts, most people don't produce that many quilts in their life. 50 quilts in this art exhibit. Luke couldn't do this on his own, so he hired people to help him. He used the studio art model that has been used for Jack Coons used this model. Michelangelo used this model. Andy Warhol used this model. Jack Coons is not the name of the people who helped him, who built the entire balloon dog. They didn't even put their name there because they entered into an agreement that Jack Coons is paying them to help him. He's the designer, and they work for him. Okay? Luke paid people, and they were women, to help him sew these quilts, to stitch them, and to lawn them. And what has been talked about is that it's so unfair that these women's names are not on the backs of the quilts. I understand we have to have this conversation. It's important, and you can have your opinion clearly out of the mind, and I'm holding you captive so I can talk. <laughs> but I was going to write a blog post about it. I was like, no, that's the whole problem. There's this dust up online by people who didn't even, they don't, even, they don't know what the quilts themselves, they didn't stitch them, they didn't long them, and they have these opinions, and they say the worst thing, and it's so awful. This, rather than talking about how these women were exploited, you know, words are very important. Exploitation, people who are stitching things who are exploited are in India. Shame. These women who were hired to do this work were paid and they agreed. And rather than talking about how they were exploited, let's discuss how they're part of a beautiful art exhibit. And their names will be in the program for that exhibit as it goes along around the world. And their names will be in the book that he hopes to produce from this exhibit. They will be credited, they will be given their due, but their names aren't on the backs of I understand this is like, we have to, you know, we have to talk about this and some people are real upset, right? I think what we should be talking about in terms of gender, and I don't want to go to SmackDown. I, I guess I am, but I don't want to be hostile. I've thought a lot about this. And I've thought a lot about not being a rat, not being too aggressive, you know, I'm so strongly about this. And, and I think we're makers. We're all makers. And rather than whinging on and swallowing between ourselves, when someone's producing really good work, if they, if these quilts were dogs, they don't have a problem. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. And they're part of the history of right? this whole thing. Rather than, than being angry amongst ourselves and firing off comments online in the moment of inspiration, please keep your inspiration to yourself. Or if you have inspiration, revise it. Let's discuss 
If you want to have a conversation about gender, you talk about supporting and supporting the Kickstarters of the women business owners who are trying to start fabric companies. No fabric company ever. And maybe some of the makers have issues with it, and that's 